Hi! I just want to specify before we start this tutorial that I saw Jennifer Wojek make this on TikTok before um, I made this myself personally, but I did not watch her TikTok tutorial. I've made this tutorial with my own methods. Here are some of Jennifer's TikToks showing the piece. I did talk to Jennifer before I filmed and released this tutorial. Just so you guys know, we are all happy and good. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I am Passionate Kelsey, and today we're gonna do a tutorial on how to make the hexagon pullover sweater. I've made a similar tutorial for this for a granny hexagon cardigan. I'm just gonna be showing you how to take that and turn it into a sweater instead of a cardigan. So it's gonna be closed in the back and in the front. Today, you're obviously gonna need some scissors. You're gonna need a yarn needle of some kind. And then for the yarn, I am using Karen Blossom Cakes. So the Karen Blossom Cakes, they are a four weight yarn. The recommended hook size is a five millimeter. Whenever I make these, I like them to be a little bit more loosely crocheted than what's recommended. So I size up my hook. I am going to be using a 6.5 millimeter hook. So my yarn is a worsted weight yarn. It recommends a five millimeter. I am sizing up, so I'm using a 6.5 hook. And as far as how much yarn you're going to need, I currently have bought four of these cakes. These are eight ounce cakes. They have 481 yards in them. I bought four of them, I guess at the end. If I remember, I'll let you know how many I used. Let's get started. All right, so to get started, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to make a magic circle. So I'm going to take the end of my yarn in my right hand. I'm going to put it over my left hand so that the end is towards my pinky. I'm gonna close these two fingers, my pinky and my ring finger. I'm gonna turn my hand over. I'm gonna take my right hand, grab my yarn, I'm gonna Wrap it around these two fingers. I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna go under, and I'm gonna go back over. I'm going to cross and make an X like that. And then I need it to stay like that, so I just pop out my pinky and grab the rest of my yarn. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hook. We're gonna go under the yarn on the bottom we're going to grab the yarn on the top. We're going to pull it through. We're going to grab that yarn again one more time. We're going to pull it through the loop and that will create a chain. At this point, you can go ahead and take your fingers out and you've got your magic loop. We're going to start this with granny clusters, which is just clusters of three double crochets. I like to do a stacked single crochet to start my double crochet round. If you would prefer not to do that, you can just chain three and that'll count as your first double crochet. But like I said, I'm going to do a stacked single crochet. So I'm gonna go through my magic loop here and I'm just gonna do a regular single crochet like that. Here's my first single crochet. And to do a stacked single crochet, I'm gonna go through this front leg of my first single crochet here, just this yarn. I'm gonna go right through that little hole. And I'm gonna do another single crochet from here. So I'm gonna yarn over, pull through that one. I'm gonna yarn over again and pull through these two loops as my single crochet. And that's it, that's a stacked single crochet and that is going to count as my first double crochet. So from here, if you have your stacked single crochet or your chain three, either one, we're gonna continue on and we're gonna work two double crochets into our magic ring. So I'm gonna yarn over, go into my ring, and I'm gonna put two double crochets in there. So that is our first cluster of three. From here, I'm gonna chain one 
I personally like to chain one in the corners of my granny squares, my granny hexagons. Anytime I'm doing a granny stitch in the corners, I like to chain one. If you like to chain two or chain three, you can go ahead and do that. It's not gonna affect the pattern very much. But like I said, I'm just gonna be chaining one throughout the entire process. Next, we're gonna make our second cluster of three. So I'm gonna do three double crochets into my magic ring. We are making a hexagon, which is a six sided shape. So we're gonna have to make six of these clusters. Right now I have two, so we're gonna make four more. And we need to chain between every cluster. So I just finished my last one. I chained one from my corner space and I'm gonna make another cluster of three. Okay, there's my three double crochets. See those right there? So now I have one, two, three sides. I'm gonna chain one to make a corner space. I'm gonna do another cluster of three double crochets. Continue, chain one, do another cluster of three double crochets. Okay, and at this point, it might look like a circle. It's just because everything is close together, but they are all separated with the chains, so you can just count those. I have my first cluster, my second cluster, my third cluster, my fourth cluster, and this was my fifth cluster, so I need one more to make six. All right, there we go. So I have six clusters of three double crochets now with chains in between every cluster. And I need to connect my round now. This is going to be also another corner space, so don't forget to put your chain amount in between there. So I'll chain one. And then I'm going to connect the round with a slip stitch. So I'm going to go into the top of my first stitch here, right here. I'm going to yarn over, pull through the top of the stitch, and then pull through the loop on my hook to make a slip stitch. And that is the end of your first round. Continuing on to the next row, we are gonna do the same thing that we did to start the first row. So either you're gonna do a stacked single crochet or you're going to be chaining three. That counts as your first double crochet. So I'm gonna be doing the stacked single crochet and I'm actually gonna be going slightly backwards and we're gonna do it in this chain space right here, the one that we just made. So I'm gonna go through the chain space I'm gonna do my single crochet. I'm gonna go through the front leg of that single crochet right there. I'm gonna do my second single crochet as part of my stacked single crochet. There you go. And then I'm going to finish off the rest of my cluster in that same chain space. Cluster of three, like always. So I'm gonna do two more double crochets just right in that same space. There's my first cluster of three, right in that first chain space. We're gonna be moving on to our second chain space. You can see it right there. We're not gonna be chaining one in between clusters on the sides of our work. We're only going to be chaining on our corners. So for the second row, every single chain space is going to be a corner. So, Moving on to the next chain space, I'm going to yarn over. I'm gonna do a cluster of three double crochets. There we go, that's three. And then I need to make this into a corner. So I'm going to do my chain one and I need to put another cluster of three into that same spot. So I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna go right back into the same hole and I'm gonna do three more double crochets. And that makes a corner. See? I'm gonna move on to our next chain space which is right here. And we need to make another corner in the chain space. 
Remember on our sides, we're not gonna be chaining one in between our clusters. So I'm not gonna chain one here. I'm just gonna move on to my next chain space. I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna do three double crochets. I'm going to make a corner, so I need to chain one. And I'm gonna do three more double crochets right in that same spot. So there it is. There is our second corner. This is our first one. We just made our second one. We're always going to have six corners, okay? We're going to go to our next chain spot and we're gonna make another corner. Like I said, you should have six corners. So I already have one, two, three, and then I have one, two, three open spots left. This one already has half of the corner made, so when we get to the end, we'll finish it off. But um, I'm just going to quickly go through these two spots because it's gonna be exactly the same. Just make a corner in all of these open chain areas Every time you do a corner, it's three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, and then in between corners, which is right now, I'm not chaining one at all. I'm just continuing to the next spot to do another corner. Okay, so once you've done all of your open spaces from your first row, once you come back to the beginning, you're gonna be met with that first cluster of three that we started the round with. And like I said earlier, that is half of a corner. So if you look at this corner, it has one cluster, it has the chain one space, and then it has the other cluster. This corner at the beginning of the row has one cluster in it already, so it just needs one more cluster and the chain one space. So I'm going to yarn over. I'm gonna go right into that first hole. I'm gonna do a cluster of three double crochets. And then I also need to do the chain one space. And then that completes the round. So I'm going to do a slip stitch into the top of the first stitch, which will be a chain or a stacked single crochet. So I'll go into the top there, do a slip stitch, and that is it for our second row. We should always have six corners, so if I start at my hook, I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six. Six corners, six sides. One, two, three, four, five, six sides. Every row is going to be virtually the same. So we're gonna start the row exactly the same as we started the last row. We're gonna go slightly backwards into the chain space that we had just created right before we did our slip stitch. You're gonna start with either your chain three or your stacked single crochet, and that counts as your first double crochet. So I'm gonna go backwards. I'm gonna go through that chain space. I'm going to create my stacked single crochet. That counts as my first double crochet. And then I'm going to continue with two more double crochets in the same space to make my first cluster. We're gonna move on past this cluster to our next space. If you notice, this space does not have a chain one, does not have a chain two or whatever our corners have. This is the corner, that one has the chain one. But this one is just a regular side area. It has no chains, it's just two clusters running into each other. So I'm just going to put one cluster of three into this space. I'm gonna go right through there. I'm gonna do my three double crochets. And then I'm gonna move on to my next space. My next space happens to be a corner because there are two clusters and there is a chain one in between them. So on top of a corner, you always need to make another corner. And if you remember, our corners are a cluster of three, 
So I'm going to do three double crochets in that spot. I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to place three more double crochets in the same spot to make the corner. Okay, moving on to our next open space. This is another side piece because there's no chains in here. So I'm just going to do one cluster in the side piece. Moving on to our next open area. This one is a corner because there is a chain there. We're going to make another corner on top of that corner. So we're going to do three double crochets. We're going to chain one and we're going to do three more double crochets in the same hole. And I'm going to just continue this all the way around until I come back to where we made that first cluster. Understand? Okay, so I've made it all the way around on row three. I've made it back to where I started the row with my single cluster in this corner space. I need to complete the corner by doing another cluster and a chain one. So I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna go through that first hole. I'm gonna do another cluster of three double crochets. Once that cluster is done, all my corner needs is a chain one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that chain one. And then I'm gonna connect the round with a slip stitch in the top of my first. Okay, so that finishes row three. If you notice, it's still a hexagon. There is still six prominent corners and there is six sides. So the corners are just going to keep continuing out. They're going to go straight in a line. Every time you come to a corner which has a chain space in it, you're going to put another corner on top of that. Every time you're working in between corners, which is going to be the sides, these flat sides here, every time you come to a space, put three double crochets in it. Don't chain one in between and just move on to the next space, which is here. Do a cluster of three and move on to the next space. If it happens to be a corner, put a corner there and then move on. And we're going to continue this. I'm going to do a little bit more rows and then I will explain to you how to fold this and how to check to see if the sizing is right for you. Okay, I am back. I have just done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows on this hexagon. And I just want to do a little check in with you guys. So first thing that I wanted to let you know is that your hexagon will not lay flat, okay? We don't want it to lay flat, otherwise it will not fold correctly later. This, this is okay, <laughs> all right? And then also what I wanna do, while the hexagon is still relatively small, I like to close up my magic circle and tie off my ends, just because if I don't do it now, I probably won't do it later at all. <laughs> I'm going to flip it over so that the wrong side is facing me. First, we're going to want to close up the magic circle. So I'm gonna take my yarn, I'm gonna pull on it until my circle gets pretty much closed. Here's the front, here's the back. I'm gonna take my yarn needle, I'm going to thread that one up. I'm gonna take my yarn needle and I'm going to go around the circle. So the yarn end is coming out of this way. So I'm just gonna continue around the circle and I'm gonna go under all those stitches. This will strengthen your magic circle so that the yarn inside the circle won't snap because I've seen that happen before. It has snapped and then the whole thing comes apart from the center. So this is just adding more layers of yarn around inside the magic circle so that it will help to not snap. And I usually go around the circle um, at least two to three times if I can.
Okay, I've gone around the circle multiple times. Usually at this point, whenever I have a regular yarn that is multiple strands twisted together throughout, what I like to do is I like to take the yarn, I like to split it in half, and then I take one half and I run it under some yarns, and then I take the two halves and I tie them together in a tight knot like three times, three or four times at least, and then I snip those right down. But this yarn is different. It's actually like a knitted tube with fibers like running through the tube. So I can't split the yarn. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap the yarn around some other yarns that are already there. And then I'm going to thread it back through the circle, but I'm going to go the opposite way. So I'm, I was threading it through the circle this way, which is clockwise. Now I'm actually going to thread it back counterclockwise. So I've gone through a couple pieces of yarn here that is going to anchor it down so that it's not just going to like fold back on itself. It'll stay put there. Now I'm going to start threading it back through counterclockwise. And I'm going to do this as much as I can until I run out of yarn. So this is what my hexagon is looking like. Whenever you are folding up the hexagon, what you're going to do is you're going to take one side, take the two corners, fold them in half so that the corners meet. This is going to be your sleeve from the corners that met each other. The sides are going to match up all the way down to the other corners. These sides will match up all the way down to the other corners. And then it kind of just naturally folds itself into this L shape which is fantastic because that's what we want. So obviously this is too small for me currently. So I'm going to keep doing rows. And once it gets looking like it's about the right size, that's when I need to start trying it on to make sure that it is the right size. You can't really try it on without some help. So the way that I like to try mine on is I get my stitch markers and what I do is Along the top of the sleeve, you know, where your arm is going to go through and runs up from your wrist to your shoulder, this is where we would be connecting it. I take my little stitch markers. I really like using the safety pin style of stitch markers and I put it in. I just put it like through the corner and then I put it through the other side in the corner as well and I clip it closed. And then I just do that on the other corner as well. Take that, go through the corner, go through the corner on the other side, clip it closed. And then I'm also gonna just put a couple along the top here. You don't have to do every space. You can if you want to, but I just do it kind of like every few inches, you know. Your sides should match up. So every time you have a hole on this side, you're gonna have a corresponding hole on this side. So I'll go through this hole. I'll match it up with the hole on the other side and I'll put my stitch marker in. Do another one down here. And then once you have your stitch markers placed periodically throughout, your top is basically connected and you can go ahead and pick up your hexagon. You can slip your hand into the sleeve. You could pull it all the way up to your shoulder and this will hang down the front of your chest. The back of this will hang down your back. Once it gets bigger, I will actually do this and I will show it to you on my body, but this is just an example. So I'm gonna continue making rows on the hexagon until it is getting close to being able to wear. Um, and then once it gets close, I will come back. We're gonna do this same thing and then I'll show you 
how to try it on for real. All right, guys, so this is how my hexagon is looking after 14 rows on here. It's getting to the point where I think maybe I could try it on, so I'm gonna show that to you guys. So I'm gonna lay it out to where I have one side like this. I'm gonna take those two corners. I'm going to put the wrong sides together like that. And then I'm going to run the top sides along each other like that. And then the bottom folds together as well. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my stitch markers and we will try it on. Here is my hexagon. I've got my stitch markers placed together all along the top here. Slide my arm in here like so and see how it looks. So this is what it looks like right now. So mainly we are going to focus on the width of the sleeve right now. If the sleeve is the width that you like it, then you can stop there. We are going to be adding more rows to the front and more rows to the back so that they connect. So if it's not like covering your chest, that's fine. We're going to add more rows to the center later anyway, but just stop whenever it fits your arm, how you like it. I think this is good and I'm ready to do my joining row and then add length to the sleeves. All right, so we are ready to do our joining row. And to do that, we're gonna start the row like regular. Here I am at the end where I joined the row initially. And I'm gonna start the next row just like normal. I'm gonna do my stacked single crochet in the corner space. I'm gonna do my other three double crochets right there, like so. And then I'm gonna start going across the side and I'm going to continue working my way around the hexagon and I'm gonna do it four sides and I'm gonna stop whenever I have two sides left. I'm gonna stop here. So I have this side left, I have this side left, and then this is where I would have started. So I'm just gonna do those four sides and then I'll come back. Okay, so I have done the rows on four sides and I'll show it to you just so we're on the same page. This right here was my first cluster. This is where I started this round and I did one side, two sides, three sides, four sides and then this is where I've left off. We have two sides left to do on this row. So there's this one, it's one side we have left. This side right here, that would be the next side we have left. And then that would connect us to the beginning of our round which is here. So from here, we're actually going to fold up our hexagon and we're going to be connecting the top of the sleeve down towards where your wrist would be, which really will hit around your elbow. And then from there, we can continue on and lengthen the sleeve if you want long sleeves. If you don't want long sleeves, you can just fasten off. What we need to do to fold it is we need to take our last side. So this is where we have left off with our yarn. We're not gonna do this side. We're gonna turn it once more and we're gonna be folding this side, which has our first cluster on it. So we're gonna take this corner, this corner where we have our first cluster, we're going to fold those together, wrong sides touching each other, okay? The tops will go along each other 
corners will meet this corner and then this corner where your yarn should still be attached and then these sides go down together as well those corners meet and that makes our L shape our yarn should be attached in this corner here and if you flip it over look at it so once you have it folded up your yarn is going to be on this side this is my right hand it's going to be up in this corner we're going to be working across this way and then on the other end you should have on your back side your starting cluster and then this is where we are going to continue so we're going to be connecting the two rows along the top by doing slip stitches between each cluster so the first thing we're going to do i ended off my first round with one cluster of three in my last corner space i need to continue the corner so instead of doing a chain one i'm actually going to just slip stitch into this corner on the back so i'm going to take my hook i'm going to go through it under like this I'm going to take my hook from the back and go through to the front. I'm going to grab the yarn. I'm going to pull through the corner and the loop on my hook. So that counts as the chain for this corner. And I'm going to continue with the other side of the corner doing my other cluster of three double crochets. So if you look at each side, each cluster we'll have a corresponding cluster. So we just made this cluster and that matches up with this cluster. So the next thing we need to do in the row is we need to make another slip stitch into our next space on our back row. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go up through the bottom, going to grab onto my yarn, pull through the space, and pull through the loop on my hook as well. Now that those two clusters are attached, I'm gonna move on to make my next cluster and my next space, so here. I'm gonna go into here, I'm gonna do my three double crochets, and then I need to find my corresponding cluster, which you can just move on to the next open space right here. I'm gonna do my slip stitch, I'm going to go up through the bottom, grab my yarn, pull through, pull through the loop. And now those corresponding clusters are connected with the slip stitch. And we'll just move on to the next one. We're going to do this all the way down the sleeve until we get to the end of the row. All right, I'm coming up to the end here. I want to show you, I just connected these two clusters with that slip stitch. On the front side, I have one space left, which is in my corner area. And then on this side, I have one cluster left where we started the row. So I'm going to put my last cluster of three into my last space on the front side, which is this corner area. And then from there, I'm going to go into the first stitch of the top of the double crochet in this cluster, like just like that. And I'm gonna do my slip stitch there. So we just connected the round with the last two clusters. And then this is what that looks like.
this is where we started connecting and then we connected all the way across the top until we got to here. So at this point, you have a fully functional half cardigan. If you want it to be short sleeves, you can stop here, cut off your yarn, that's fine. I am going to be continuing my work from here. I'm gonna be doing rounds and rounds and rounds and making this long sleeve. So we'll just keep on going. I'm gonna turn it because we're gonna be working around this way. So this is what we have to start with. Our first cluster of three is going to be put right into this space here between these two clusters that we've connected with a slip stitch. So I'm gonna start the round just like I start any other cluster. I'm gonna do a stacked single crochet or you can chain three. That is going to count as a double crochet. So I'm gonna go through this hole right here going to do my single crochet. I'm going to do another single crochet through the front leg of that single crochet. And that is my stacked single that counts as a double crochet. We need to put a cluster in there. So I'm going to do two more double crochets right in that same spot. So I'm going to move along in a circle and I'm going to go to my next spot, which happens to be here. I'm gonna do a cluster in there. And I'm just gonna keep working my way around the sleeve. So in every space, we're gonna do a cluster of three. Whenever you're working on the sleeves, there is no corners at all. So every space is just going to have three double crochets in it. There's gonna be no chaining one at all. It's just gonna work like regular granny stitch rows. Once we get back to the beginning, you're just going to slip stitch to that first cluster in the top of the first stitch, and we're gonna continue on to the next row. All right, I've worked my way around the sleeve. This is where we started the row. With this cluster here, this is where we ended the row with the last cluster, the last space that was available. And I'm going to connect these two clusters with the slip stitch. I'm gonna go through the top of my first stitch on this cluster. I'm gonna do a slip stitch. And that completes the round. So to start the second round, I'm gonna go ahead and do a stacked single crochet right in this space where we just did the slip stitch. So I'm gonna go through this area down here. I'm gonna do my stacked single crochet and that counts as my first double crochet. So I will do the next two to complete the cluster. Ta-da, there's my first one and I will continue around to the next spaces and we're just gonna be doing a regular granny stitch. So I'm gonna keep doing this until the sleeve reaches the length that I want it. Now that the top of the sleeve is connected, you can easily just slip this on your arm, try it on, make sure that the sleeve length is to your liking and you can stop at any point. All right guys, so here is my hexagon and here is where we are extending the sleeves. I've just got to a point where I like the length of my sleeve, so I'm going to stop doing granny stitch rows. I ended up doing 15 extra rows from where we connected the top and then these are the 15 extra rows. You can leave the end of the sleeve like this if you want to, that's totally fine, but I like to do an extra row of just single crochets around the bottom of the cuff. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just go around the tops of all the stitches one last time and do a row of single crochets to finish off my sleeve. I'll do that, I'll go around, I'll come back and I'll show you how to tie off the end.
Okay, so I've done my last single crochet in the row. I'm not gonna do a slip stitch. I'm actually going to get my scissors. I'm going to cut my yarn off. And then I'm gonna grab my yarn needle. I'm going to pull my hook out along with my loop all the way off. From here, I'm going to thread my yarn and in my first single crochet right here, I'm gonna go under both legs of the stitch. Just like that, I'm gonna go through, pull my yarn through. And then from here, I'm gonna go down the top of my last single crochet that we did in the round. And then I'm also gonna go through the front leg of it as well, like that. And then when you pull that through, you can see on the top that as you tighten it, that is going to create another loop. This one right here is the one that I just made by doing that. So that creates a seamless join along the top. So you can't tell where you started or stopped the stitches. And then from here, I will just bring my yarn to the back. And then from there, I will weave it in. All right, so I think that's good enough. I'm gonna cut off the excess yarn that I have. And that is the end of my sleeve. So guess what? We are gonna need two of these. So um, the second sleeve is going to be exactly the same as the first because it's just a mirror image and they're going to be made in the exact same way. So at this point you can pause the video, make the second one. If you need to go back over the instructions, you can rewind the video and start over from the beginning, but you're gonna do the exact same thing. Make sure you count your rows so that you have the same number of rows and stuff like that. Um, but just make your second sleeve and then I will meet you when we have two. All right, guys, I finished my two sleeves. So this is what I am working with. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect the back panels together. So we're going to have to take our sleeves. We're going to slip them on like that. See what we're working with here. And we're going to need to take two measurements, all right? So I get my sleeves up on my shoulders and situated so that they won't fall off. And the first measurement we're going to take is going to be right up by our neck. Right up as close to your neck as you can get pretty much. And make sure your tape measure is running flat right across the top of your chest. And you're going to want to write down the measurement that that is. For me, that is about eight inches. And then once you have that written down, we're gonna take a second measurement and that is gonna be down here where your bust area is. Um, and that is mainly because the top measurement, that is a flat area that's gonna be for our back panels connecting. But I know some people in the bust area, they are going to be larger. So you may need to add more inches between your panels on the front than you would need to on the back. For me, this measurement is gonna be like almost the same because my front and my back are both um, <laughs> pretty flat. But um, if you have a bigger bust, this part is gonna be important. So I would just do it again down by your bust line. So for me, this second measurement is 10 inches. 
So the first one up here was eight and down by my bust, I have 10 inches. So the first one is gonna be your back measurement. The second one is going to be your front panel measurement. So write both of those down and we will use them just in a second. All right guys, so go ahead and get your sleeves ready. Uh, we're just gonna need one for right now. It doesn't matter which one since they are exactly the same. And you're going to take your measurement that you did across the top towards your neck, the smaller measurement, and we're gonna take that and we're gonna half it. So my measurement was eight inches. So that means I need to do four inches across. We're gonna do four inches on each side so that in total I'll have my measurement of eight inches. So just whatever your measurement was, I would just do it to the inch or to the half inch and take it in half. So, you know, if your measurement was nine inches, half of that will be 4.5. So I am going to go ahead and I'm going to start my row. So we're gonna be working on a panel. It doesn't matter which side you choose on the first one. It will matter on the second one, but I'm gonna start this with a slip knot. I'm gonna put that on my hook. And then looking at this, I'm gonna start on this side. This is towards the bottom. This is up by my shoulder and this is my sleeve. So I'm gonna be starting on the bottom corner, right in this corner here. And I'm gonna start my row with a cluster of three double crochets. I'm just gonna go right into that corner stitch there. Okay, there's my cluster of three. I'm gonna continue across the back row, just like regular, like with our clusters of three double crochets in the granny stitch. Just like that, I'm gonna be going all the way across until I get to the last space. Once we get to the last space in the row, this is what it's gonna look like. This is where we connected the clusters with the slip stitches across the shoulder and upper arm area. And our last space we wanna go into is gonna be this corner right here, the last corner on our back. So we're actually gonna end this with just one double crochet instead of a cluster like we started the row with. So I'm just gonna go into this space here and I'm gonna do that one double crochet Okay, so we started down here with a cluster of three. We went all the way across the back until we ended in our last corner space with one double crochet. All right, I'm gonna turn my work. And then I'm gonna make another row of the granny stitch in this starting space right here. I'm gonna do a cluster of three double crochets. I'm gonna start with my stacked single crochet. And that counts as my first double crochet. And I'm gonna do two more in that space. One, two, there you go. And then I will keep moving down the row. Just doing a regular granny stitch. So I'm gonna do three double crochets in every space until I get to the end. All right, so I just went into the last space in my row. If you notice, I have this cluster that we started with and I have no more spaces to go into. So we're actually gonna end this row with a double crochet into the first double crochet that started that cluster. So I'm gonna do a double crochet just right here in the first double crochet of the row, like that. And that is how we will continue our rows until we have reached half of our first measurement. So if you look at this right now, I have only extended it by one and a half inches and I need to do four inches because my measurement was eight inches. So every row is going to start with a
cluster of three double crochets, every row is going to end with one double crochet. So I just ended with one double crochet. Whenever I turn my work and start my next row, I'm gonna start with that cluster of three. So I'm gonna do my stacked single crochet. That will count as my double crochet. And then I'm gonna do the other two to make my first cluster and then I will move on. Once I get to the end of the row, I'll put that single double crochet right into that last stitch and that will finish off the row. I'm just gonna keep doing this until I have met my four inches and then I will meet you back. All right guys, so this is what my piece is looking like. It's my sleeve over here and then this is where we are extending the back panel. My measurement was eight inches, so I'm gonna wanna do half of that, which is four inches. So uh, when I measure this, I can see that I have already done four inches. And for me, that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows. After I've done those seven rows, I can go ahead and cut off my yarn. I'm just gonna leave a little tail so that I can weave that in later. And for now, that is that. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my other sleeve. I'm gonna lay them out so that both sleeves are going in the opposite directions. Here's the other side with my other sleeve, just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure I mark the back panel of this one so that I know my sleeves are both going in the right direction and we are extending the back sides on both sleeves. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a marker in it. And I'm gonna put my marker in the bottom corner here because that is where we started the rows on the other one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the exact same thing really. We're gonna start our rows in the bottom corner. We're gonna do the same amount of rows and then they are going to match up here. What we are going to do though is we're gonna stop when we have one row left to do because on that last row, we're actually gonna be connecting the back with the slip stitches just like we did on the tops of the sleeves. So I did seven rows on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do six rows on this side and then I'll have one more left to do to slip stitch up the backs and I will show that to you, but I'm gonna go ahead and go do my six rows of extending. Obviously leave the yarn connected and on the seventh row, whenever I connect them, I'll go over how to do that. All right guys, so here I am back. I've extended the other back panel of my sleeves. This is where I started. I needed to add four inches, so this side has seven rows for me. On this side, I've done six rows because we are stopping one row short so that when we add our another row with the slip stitches, attaching it up the back, they will be both equal to each other, seven and seven. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna like make sure that these are both aligned and I am going to be crocheting across where my hook is attached my next row is gonna go this way. So I'm just gonna line up on the other side where we need to do the slip stitches. The two sides, we're gonna be slip stitching together. I'm gonna line those up and then I'll just like fold the whole project in half so that it's kind of out of the way. And I have my two sides ready to slip stitch together. So that's what's going on right now. I am going to zoom you in so that you can see the stitches better. Okay, so these are the two sides we're connecting. We're gonna connect this side to this side. And to begin the row, we're gonna do a cluster of three double crochets. On this side, we have a cluster of three double crochets ready to connect. We do need to connect the first stitch with the first stitch on this side. So if you're doing a chain, you're gonna chain however many two or three and then you're gonna slip stitch into the top of this one but I'm gonna do a stacked single crochet so I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do my first single crochet I'm gonna to go to do my stacked single crochet I'm gonna go through the front leg yarn over pull through and then at this point I'm going to go ahead and go through the top stitch 
of the first double crochet on this cluster on that side. I'm gonna yarn over and then I'm gonna pull through all of the stitches on my hook. And that just connected the first double crochet on this side to the first double crochet on that side, okay? I'm gonna continue and make a cluster of three with two more double crochets into this first open area. All right, so that is my first cluster of three. And that is going to match up with my cluster of three on the other side. This brown one here and this blue one here, these are gonna match up. And we're gonna do a slip stitch into this space. Now those are connected. I'm gonna move on to my next space and do that cluster of three double crochets. I need to connect that with my next cluster on this side. See, these two. So I'm going to go to the next space on my back panel and I'm going to do the slip stitch. Now those are connected and we're just gonna continue along and do this all the way up. This is just like when we connected the top of the sleeves, okay? Okay, so if you notice, whenever you're going to end the row, you've done your last cluster in your last space. You have one more cluster on this side. We're gonna connect those with a slip stitch, just like normal. So I'm gonna go into the next space, do the slip stitch, and so forth. If you notice, on this side we have one double crochet left, and on this side we have that cluster left. So we need to do a double crochet and connect it to this double crochet. So I'm gonna just yarn over, double crochet into the last stitch of that cluster. And after you've done the double crochet, just go ahead and slip stitch into the top of this double crochet here. Okay, I'm gonna unfold my top and show it to you. But this is where we just ended with those two double crochets and then this right here, right along this seam, that is where I have slip stitched all of my back panel together. At this point, we are going to cut off our yarn. This is what our project is looking like so far. We just connected up the back. The next step in the process is to do pretty much exactly the same thing, but we're gonna be doing it to the front sides and meeting in the middle. So remember your second measurement, it was across your bust line. My measurement was 10 inches. I'm gonna do the same thing that we did on the back. I'm gonna split that measurement in half. So for me, it was 10 inches, which means I need to do five inches on either side of the front panels. So to go ahead and start that, I'm going to pick a side panel. I'm just gonna go with this one on my left side. And we're gonna do the same exact thing. So I'm gonna get my yarn, I'm gonna get my hook. I'm gonna start with a slip knot, throw that on my hook. I'm gonna start in the bottom corner and I'm gonna do a cluster of three. And the next one, I'm gonna do another cluster of three. Obviously this is just gonna work all the way up to the top. 
Once you get here, you're going to do one double crochet into the corner, the last corner on this front side, just one double crochet. And then whenever you turn, you're going to start your next row with a cluster of three. Every row will start with a cluster of three and end with a single double crochet just by itself. All right. Just keep doing that until you have half of your second measurement. So for me, that's going to be five inches. I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll come back. All right, guys, this is what my sweater is looking like right now. I went ahead and extended this side of the front by my required five inches. For me, that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows of the granny stitch. I'm going to go ahead and cut off my yarn. And then from here, we're going to need to extend the other side of our front panel to match up with this side. And we're going to go ahead and start in the same bottom corner that we started with on this side. So I'm going to take my yarn and I'm going to do that slip stitch, put it on my hook. And we're going to be starting with a cluster of three in this bottom corner on my right side. I'm going to take this. I'm going to kind of pick it up so that I can work with it. And I'm going to do that first cluster of three into my corner. Just work all the way across there until we get to the last spot. Okay, I'm coming up to the last open space on this row, which just to make sure we're on the same page, that is going to be the corner. I'm going to do one double crochet in it. And I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to work the row back this way. So we're going to do the same thing that we did on the back side. This panel, I made eight rows. So when I'm doing this side, I'm going to stop one short eight rows. This one I'm going to do seven rows and then when we do the eighth row we're going to be slip stitching the two panels together. So I'm going to go ahead and do those seven rows and then we will come back. All right guys here's where I am on my project. So this side is the side that we started with. This is where I have done five inches or eight rows for me and on this side is where my yarn is still connected up here. And I ended up doing um, seven rows, one less than the side that we started with. And I um, have ended up at the top of my work. Depending on whether you have an even or odd number of rows, you will either end up at the top or at the bottom. But we're going to be doing basically the same thing. So at this point, we need to decide how much room you want to leave at the top for your like neck opening, you know, where it folds out and forms a little collar or if you want you can connect it all the way up and have it just a solid front. For me I have noticed that usually if I leave about five inches open on the top and then I start connecting it from there down then that leaves like a good corner to fold out on both sides and I think it looks pretty good. So I'm going to measure that five or six inches for me and I'm going to go ahead and put a stitch marker in that opening where the five inches hits because that's how I'm going to know when I want to start connecting my rows together. All right, so I am at the top. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start my next row. My row is going to be normal all the way until I get to the point where my stitch marker is, where I want to start connecting. And then I'm going to start doing those slip stitches to connect my rows together all the way down. If you have your hook connected at the bottom of your work, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start the row with the connecting stitches. You're going to want to connect with the slip stitches and your clusters all the way up until you hit that point where the stitch marker is and then you're going to stop connecting with the slip stitches and you're just going to do the rest of the row regular until you get to the end. So on my example I'm just going to go ahead and start my next row. We're always going to start these rows with that three double crochet cluster. 
I'm not going to be connecting because I am up by my neck and this is where the corners are going to fold out and create the collar. So I'm just going to be continuing down until I have the same number of clusters on each side right here and right here. Counting my clusters, the ones that I have just done, and the ones on this side until the pink stitch marker right here. They match up equally. I have one, two, three, four, five on both sides. And this is where I'm going to start connecting with the slip stitches. So I'm just gonna go through where my stitch marker was, do the slip stitch, and then I'll continue on with my clusters to the next spot. Do a slip stitch in the next spot. And just continue. This connecting is going to be the same as the connecting that we've been doing throughout the piece. Okay, so that connects the front side and there's connected from here all the way down and then this opens up and creates the head hole area and these two little flaps for the collar. So this completes pretty much the top area of our cardigan. If you wanna stop here, it'll make a cute little crop top, but I'm gonna continue on and show you how to make the whole thing longer to go down past your hips. I will be coming back up to the neckline later because I like to do a round of single crochet just to like top it off, just like we did around the cuffs. So if yours is like mine, you had this row starting up at the collar and you worked your way down, you can actually leave your yarn attached and we can continue with the rest of the length of the body from here. But if you started at the bottom and you did this row working upward towards the collar, you're gonna have to cut off your yarn there and you can reconnect down at the bottom. But from here, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over like that so that we can work in a circle around the bottom of the top. And I'm gonna zoom you in and show you how to do that. Okay, here we are at the bottom of the work. This is where I ended off. And going around the bottom, we're just gonna be working like a regular granny stitch pattern. So on the sides, it's gonna be really simple. You're just gonna be doing three double crochets in every one of these spaces. But along these areas right here, you're just gonna work the double crochets into these spots where you have just the one double crochets, we're gonna skip the cluster areas. So these holes right along here is where we're gonna be working into. So for me, I have a hole directly right here to start with. So I'm going to work my way up with the stacked single crochet. And then I'm gonna put two more double crochets into that spot to create my first cluster. Just like that, and then I'll move on to my next spot right here, and I'll do another cluster of three. Move on to the next one, do that cluster of three again. Next one. Okay, and then the next spot is this one right here. Obviously, this will just work its way all the way around until you get back to where you started. Once you've made it all the way back around to the beginning where you started your first cluster, we're just going to slip stitch into the first double crochet right there. That will connect your round, and then we'll start the next round by doing the stacked single crochet where we just did the slip stitch, or you can chain three and that counts as a double crochet. And then just put two more double crochets into that same spot 
and we will start around and around and around for the next rows. You're just gonna keep doing this until the length of your sweater falls exactly where you want it. And then after that, I like to add a few rows of single crochet to the bottom. If you want to leave it, that's totally fine. All right, guys, so here's the progress on my sweater. Here I have extended the bottom. I ended up doing 15 rows. And then I also put a row of single crochets just around the bottom. At this point, we are really, really close to done. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a row of single crochets around the collar just to give it a finishing touch to match the ends of my sleeves and the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom you in and we're gonna do that. Okay, so we're on the neckline and I wanna do a row of single crochets just around. So I'm going to make a slip knot. I'm gonna put it on my hook and then I'm gonna start just on the back of the neck area. I'm going to start right here. I'm going to go through double crochet. I'm going to go through that one twice. And then on the clusters, if you look at the side, they have two openings. So there's one towards the bottom, one towards the top, like that. And then on the next space, it just gets two single crochets. You can do this however works best for you, but I'm just making my way around. Once you're coming up to this corner area in the top corner, I just like to do three single crochets all in the same spot so that it turns it. Just like that. So three single crochets in the same spot and then make your way down the center. Once you're down in the center, I just did a single crochet in my last um, cluster double crochet area. I have this little open space right here from where we did the slip stitch. So I'm gonna crochet into that. And then I'll keep going up my other side. At the other corner, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do three single crochets in the last spot to turn that corner. Just like that. And then I'll continue around the neckline to where I started. Okay, I made it all the way around, so I'm going to cut off my yarn, pull it out with my hook, and then I'll get my yarn needle. And we will go through the top of the first single crochet that we did, like that. And then we will go down the top of the last single crochet that we did and that will connect the round with the loop. And then after that, you'll just weave in all of your ends and we'll call it good. All right guys, so here is my finished product. Here is what my collar looks like. I did not block this. I don't really block anything that I make. So here's what it looks like. 
Just some information for you guys. I ended up using three of these Karen Blossom cakes. Um, I used two full ones and then this is my third. So I just have like a tiny bit left. Um, and just as a reminder, this is a four weight yarn. I used a 6.5 millimeter hook and these cakes are eight ounces or 481 yards. So that is how much yarn that I used. Of course, I want to say thank you so much for watching. If you made this, I hope that you now have a lovely, beautiful sweater for the upcoming fall and winter months. If you did make this, go ahead and tag me on whatever platform you end up posting it on if you feel like. And that's all I have for you. So bye.